in fact is, is a field that started around World War II when pilots were losing too many aircraft and they found out that it's due to the design of the cockpit. Since then, we've got a field where human factors is applied to healthcare. It's applied to the transportation system. It's applied to education systems to understand how children learn from technologies. It's essentially understanding that unpredictable, that, that, that human factor in these other very highly engineered systems. And we look at how the tasks, the procedures, the equipment, and the overall environment work together to influence those human performance um, outcomes. So one of the challenges of justifying human factors and safety engineering is that when you invest money and resources into safety and human factors, the payoff in safety is nothing happening. So how do you quantify that? In areas like healthcare, it's a potential life or death issue. Same with air traffic control, same with nuclear energy. <laughs> so research has actually shown that if you bring in a human factors specialist in early in the process compared to if you do it much later, the return on investment is about 100 times more. So what that means is if you bring in someone in late and they had, I highlight all these human factors issues, you're gonna be spending a lot more money reverse engineering and doing a lot of the processes that are already in place. It's not just about reducing the risk of accidents, but it's also improving the quality of people's lives.